Sunday morning. It rained last night. As you can see, the uh, this part of my driveway is in the shade in the morning, and the garage is right there. And uh, so I think I'll pull the uh, the tiny milling machine out and uh, put it on here and, and look at it today. Just just play around, see what I got. And as the sun moves over, it'll get too hot to work, and I'll put it away. Did my yoga this morning. I feel pretty good. Uh, this uh, this machine is a uh, mill and a lathe. I thought I'd show how the uh, lathe part fits in here. Now here's the uh, the ways and the cross slide. I guess you'd call it. This is the, uh, the spindle bearing. I, it fits on this pin, and there's a keyway there to lock it straight uh, along the, uh, the bed. There's also some uh, uh, markings here in degrees, it looks like. So I guess if you take this out, you can turn this. I guess you would use that to uh, uh, cut bevels because you don't have a, uh, a compound slide on this. So uh, this fits down on there like that, and you can see it locks pretty good. There's a set screw right here that locks against that pin to hold it in place. And here's the uh, the motor. The motor comes in this way and screws into this bracket. Now I didn't put it on, but there'd be a pulley on the back here that this little pulley would drive to turn the chuck. It's a little tight. Uh, that's the way it was when I got it. I'm going to have to take the bearing. Maybe stuck, but I'll take them apart and lubricate them anyway. Because that should turn out uh, absolutely free. And yet, it's got to be uh, accurate side to side or you can't take a decent cut. This is the cover, by the way, and it, uh, it fits over it like that. So, uh, I think somebody put the uh, jaws in a little uh, out. You have to be careful on a scroll uh, a scroll chuck that you get them in in the right order yeah, or else one will, one will stick out more than the other. I'll mess with that later. I didn't get the reversible jaws with it either. I might have to order them from uh, Sherline. This is where you mount the mill. Uh, I want to show that, the milling head that sticks up. This is loose and I have to get the gib for it to go in there so it will be nice and tight. It doesn't move with a screw, you kind of just move it along where you want it and then lock it down. But you got to have a give in there to keep it tight. Here's the, uh, the milling head and all its cabling on it. And uh, it fits right down on here. And once again, you have a keyway right there. So you fit this down over it like that. And it has a uh, uh, set screw right there which locks it against that nut. And if this had the correct uh, gibs in it, it would be nice and rigid. And then uh, you can move this up and down along this way here with the uh, handle up here. So then you move this part that way and that way with the piece bolted to it and your milling cutter, which you can't quite see, there's your milling cutter, uh, takes a cut on it. Nice little machine, it's all aluminum. I wouldn't try to machine anything real tough, but uh, for brass or aluminum and small pieces of steel and plastic, of course, this will be a real, uh, a real fine uh, addition to my workshop. Especially if I get it in the CNC mode. I can't wait. I uh, mounted the uh, the mill uh, lathe on it on its side. This is this is down. This is up. And uh, this right here, this stepper is not really turning. Well, it's turning it, but this screw here, which moves this back and forth, is very tight. And I think it has to do with the gibs here. Now this this slide is very dry. There's no oil on it. And I think somebody 
somebody tightened up this gib right here I think too much and that's keeping this part from moving up and down the, uh, the slide here uh, I don't think it's broken I just think it needs to be uh, loosened and a uh, little oil put in there well I'm hoping anyway this one works great see that's moving this way so uh, that's my my little task here I think I've loosened it <clears throat> I think I figured out how it works <clears throat> um, there's a set screw right here which you you can't see which holds that uh, piece of bent uh, uh, steel which fits into the gib that's the gib now when you loosen the set screw and then you move this it, it rides up on the gib this way and gets too tight and when you go this way it uh, it gets too loose so this this is what holds the gib in place once you adjust it <clears throat> and it was uh, trying to loosen this to get the thing to work actually was making it so it was uh, it was over tightening interesting I've got it loose though you can see it's it's, it's moving a little bit there see Just a little bit anyway that was tightening the gib it came out this end now I go the other way and I get looser and looser as I go yeah, it's coming out. Okay, I'll fix that. This slide right here is completely missing the gib, and that's where the mill column stands up going this way. And that's completely missing the gib, and you can see how loose it is. This is uh, this is where the missing gib is, and you can see this is the uh, the gib retainer. I don't know what you. Uh, just call it a gib retainer and it kind of fits in in there and then you tighten this screw to, to hold it in place it would be rotate it down like this so it'd be sticking in the gib which fits between here and here to keep this from flopping around the other side fits uh, against the dovetail so that's how you adjust uh, how tight uh, a moving machine tool is for movement that way and this way. If you made it exactly on, you'd have no way of adjusting it. Now this right here is some kind of lock screw and I think they were locking it down against here and they, they rounded off the uh, the ways a little bit. That's not good. I'll have to, to file that. But I'm just going to put this uh, retainer in there and put the set screw on it so I don't lose it. Now while I was messing around there these are kind of hard to get off. I gave it a, a good tug though. And uh, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, seven pins here. And one's blanked. So you can't get it in wrong. And that goes to the stepper motor. I have to evaluate the steppers and see if these are, uh, are modern enough that I could uh, actually get drivers for them. I think uh, what they did here was they. Uh, that this was the original mill's uh, handle and it is marked in thousands of an inch it looks like uh, 50 thousandths per turn and they moved it from from here to the other side of the stepper so you could still use manual and as you can see it moves quite freely now that I loosened up the gib and, and put a little oil on the uh, on the ways um, this moves quite freely not easy to see the movement but it is moving and uh, I'm quite pleased that means it's not junk I got something here I can uh, I can play with and uh, turn this into a, uh, a little tiny CNC mill and lathe cool huh